When we think of good Pokemon, the first few come to mind are Mega Rayquaza, Mega Mewtwo, and obviously, Stunfisk. And that comes from the totally insane base stats, which most of the time are above 650. So, what happens if you limit yourself and stop using such good Pokemon? Well, today's challenge is here to test that, and we will try it out in one of the most interesting and hard raw max there are, Pokemon Emerald Row. So, you might ask, what do we count as bad Pokemon? Well, it's kinda hard to decide that, so the way I went is basically, if a Pokemon has below 500 total base stats, we can use them. Let's take, as an example, uh, Rapidash. Rapidash has exactly 500 base stats. So, it does bring the question, can we use Rapidash? And the answer will be no, as he has to have exactly below 500 base stats. So, that's about it. If you guys could leave a like and a sub, it would be greatly appreciated. Also, if you can, go follow me on Twitch. I'll probably be live when I upload this video. Alright, peace. But it's fine. We go back. So let me explain basically what's going on here if you haven't played Emerald Row. So you see all these routes. Basically, imagine that the route from before where you saw Nurse Joy is the place where I kinda have to go. Because Nurse Joy is a guarantee heal plus all the shops together. So, as we try to find our first Pokemon, I found Marini. In my head, Toxpex is such a good Pokemon so it's too good to be used. But a viewer told me that actually Toxpex's total base stats is actually below 500 which makes it usable and trust me, this thing was truly the best Pokemon we had in this entire run. So as we continued our adventure, hopefully we tried to get a few more good Pokemon and we actually got pretty lucky as we got Caterpie, also a Freelish, and it's not that easy to get like really bad Pokemon in this game, so we actually got pretty lucky. Also Shiny Carablast came in, although I don't think I used him too much in this run, but hey, it was kinda cool. Also got a good old Joe over. I mean, Snowball, hey, same thing, right? We got them, we got a pretty good team now. Finally, we got six Pokemon, and we can finally go ahead and fight the first gym. As we get a quick heal from Nurse Joy, we get superpower from the movie learner on KD. We can make our way to the first gym. And I'll be honest here, the first gym is always the easiest, as we do get Brawl, which is pretty cool. I think Brawl later on can be a pretty big threat. But with a Pancham in, we just click Melcoat and get rid of him pretty easily enough. Now, Persimmon is a pretty big threat, I will not lie. This thing is really really strong, but thankfully he only adds beat up if you don't know beat up works, it, is, it hits the same amount of times as the Pokemon who are alive, and he only had one Pokemon left, which kinda saved me, and his Rogue didn't have any moves that could hit my Frillish, so we were good, and that's how we got our first gym ban. So, just like the other route, this route was absolutely massive. We got a Torkoal, which we replaced Frillish with, this was actually a mistake, I will not lie. But then we got this boy, Darmuka man, just like Lock Specs, or I guess uh, at the point Marini, this thing was so good in this run, man. He was absolutely insane. As we just replaced the Torko, like literally just got. And we also got a doable to level up. Oh, sorry, I didn't get him. We just killed him to get some more levels and went ahead to Nell's Joy. Got a quick heal, went to buy an Adamant Mint for some of my Pokemon to change their nature. And we went ahead to the second gym. As we go ahead, we do see Lisa. Now, Lisa is a psychic type trainer, which is a bit scary. But thankfully, Duran does outspeed Sigalith, and we can just go ahead, click crunch right away. And you might hear this and say, wait, how is this hard? Well, trust me, the first two gyms are pretty easy, but later on, it will get a lot, a lot harder. So, as we move on, we get a pretty weird route where you have to go for a shop and then for the route. But actually, the cool thing is we got a cutie fly, which this thing can be a pretty good sticky web setter, and a quiver dancer, which made it a lot, a lot better to use for some other Pokemon, like, you know. Butterfree. Then we also got a heal up tile, which uh, I'll be honest here, he he wasn't he wasn't really used. <laughs> he uh, you guys will see it in a second. Uh, but it was supposed to be some good coverage to have long term. So as we made our way to the shop, or more importantly, the third gym, it was time to go and meet Flaneri. And she sends out her tail call, which again is a massive problem for my team, as we're pretty weak to fire. So I send in Marini. Now I'll be honest here, I basically toxic stalled this thing because I couldn't do anything else. And this will happen a few more times across this run, so I'll just skip it and just show you, like, right here, what happens when you actually faint. Now, this thing comes in, and I was just gonna go into Darm, but obviously, he had high orcs power, we EQ, till it comes in, and this thing is a massive threat to my team. So, I go right ahead, go straight into heal up tile, and, as I said, basically sack it two minutes after catching it. That shit is fucking trash, dog, get the fuck off the airway! But then, we could just go ahead, go into Darm, pop a quick Momo Milk, get this guy back to full HP, it doesn't do, it doesn't matter, we earthquake, she sends out Charmeleon, and that is gone, and that is our third gym badge, 
only with a small loss. So it was time to pick a new route and basically for me currently it was do I prefer the player shop or the item shop. Which the player shop was a better idea here and we do evolve our attack specs through fighting some trainers, get painful bunker, also evolves crafty. Also we find a wall Pikachu which again fits the bill and is a perfect replacement for the heal optile we just lost. As we went on down the route we actually saw this amazing Pokemon. Fail seed. And again, just like Marini, I didn't believe this thing is actually below 500, but he actually is, which was insane. We also defeated some more trainers, but with that Ferro seed, or I guess Ferrophone, it's gonna be insane. And we also gave Rebound Big Sticky Web. Obviously, we want to use this as a speed lowering strategy, and it was time for the fourth gym, which was actually Juan. As Juan sends out his Kingler, something pretty weird happened. Obviously I went into Toxpex to go ahead and Baneful Bunker in hopes he would poison himself, right? But something kinda weird happened where I think Bunker kinda destroyed the game where he didn't attack me even once, he just agility like 20 quadrillion times and then I, he just got Toxic stalled, but I mean, uh, I mean I'll take it. Then Muscadine came in, we got one more T-Spike up to get two T-Spikes up so we can fully on poison all of his Pokemon, then signs out Ferrophone to destroy that. Get a leech seed on Jellison just so we can get some chip. Then we went ahead into Scrafty, stabbed Crunch. He went into Mantine and I actually forgot I had Thunder Punch, but if I did, I would obviously done it. So I went into Ferrophone, clicked Leech Seed, went back into Scrafty, and then clicked Thunder Punch to end off Mantine. He actually has his own Tox Packs, but we do get some chip off it. Thunder Punch goes straight into KD and then Tantrum once, which will be enough for the win. And although it's not as hard as the last one, it was a bit difficult trying to kinda have a pretty good strategy going up for this one. So it was time to pick which route we would go to, so I picked the right one because it was only one route and we didn't have any dead Pokemon, so we could just go ahead and pretty much go straight through it. There was nothing too interesting, we just bought some potions. It was time for the fifth gym. Okay, there was nothing really interesting back then, so yeah, but Winona is the 5th gym leader, which is the flying type. So she leads off to a case which is a massive threat with Serene Grace Air Slash. So we go into Ferrophone and I got flinched. So with some help from some potions, we got rid of Kiss, Alucha came in, we went straight into Pex to T-Spike and get some bunkers. And in the end, after some stalling, like always, we managed to get rid of it. Delibird came in, tried to have spin my spikes away, but we got rid of that. Fire punched him with Dom. Then this we came in. It was a massive threat because the dance those could be an insane threat to my entire team. But thankfully, he only used bounce, which works perfect with bunkers. I can bunker whenever he bounces, so he can't actually hit me until the end he revealed power whip. What was fine at that point. He sent in Covenant, I sent in Dumb, Fire Punched, and we got through Inona pretty easily. So the next route came, and nothing really came with it, except us leveling up a bit of our Pokemon just to level cap. We also beat some trainers along the way. But in reality, this route had nothing, but the next one actually also had nothing. So, yeah, I mean. Later on it will be a lot more interesting, sorry, but I mean we had six Pokemon, we didn't really need to do anything, so we just got scalded in the movie learner and got some mints for the team and that was basically it, and we went our way to the gym and go and fight Watson, which I wasn't too prepared for Watson, my team wasn't too good against Lusher types, and, and that happened, yeah, so that earthquake almost gave me a heart attack <laughs> on 3 HP. It's in the lantern, I did have HP fire, but thankfully, there is mandatory rain when you face Watson, so that kind of saved me, I would not. Lie. We bunker decided to absolutely stall this man like we always do. Gamachula came in again. As you see, I'm thinking, okay, do I have to sack something to go into Dom and then try to kill the Gavantula? So in the end, I go into Ferrophone. I lay a bug buzz on 2 HP in Leech Seed. So I think the Pokemon haven't stall me to go install him. That's a pretty good co PM effort for that. He sends in Zolt, he subs, low kicks, he takes damage, I iron head him. Then I go ahead straight to stall on the low kick, bunker, poison him. But here I make a mistake which I go into Ferrophone as I expect the bolt beak and I think I would live it. Then I died to it, which is a horrible mistake by me. Sends in more Penko, but I'll scar off the Manantan. Finishes him off, but dude, that Ferrophil and play was absolutely horrible by me. I would not lie. As I see Nils Joy, my plan is to go straight to her. We also find Ropenko, which again, another lecture type to add to our team. <laughs> and. <laughs> <laughs> and in a second, I'm gonna replace him. But before that, we do fight some chance. I'm sorry, it's like every time I get an extra type, which was a hill up tile, Pikachu, and now Mopanko. So yeah, I decided to go with Lonto just because I needed another ground type, but that one exploded on me. 
So I got his brother and took him to the team and Mopenko was replaced uh, again. <laughs> Later on we went ahead, got the Nils Cho heal, got the moves we needed on Lunatone, and went ahead to the Zenith Gym, which actually was Norman. Now this shouldn't be that big of a threat as I do have two fighting types, but Solax comes in, which means I can sneak a web, so I go straight into Jean. Go ahead and drain punch, I actually should have did the answer, I will not lie. He paralyzes me with body slam, he goes into gradient, so I drain punch, he has fucking counter and he kills my guy immediately. So I get revenge with Darmanitan, he goes into Diggersby, it did us so much damage on Bluntone. She did so much damage, I had to basically sack it. And then I went back into Darm, clicked Superpower, got rid of Diggersby, he sends out Trampa, I go straight into the B and Quiver up to get a bit of stats up. Bug Buzz, uh, and then they training kiss that as he Fire Blast and gave me another heart attack. Goes into a Bistagon, I kiss that, get my HP back, get rid of him. Although you beat Norman, losing two big Pokemon is a pretty bad idea, which I should have probably played a bit better. As my nurse choice senses come out, I can see here and we go straight to her. That sounds kind of weird. <laughs> so you have to obviously take two Pokemon, and the thing is, uh, we took Torkoal. These two Torkoals are the only Pokemon I could actually use in this route. All of the other Pokemon were above 500. So we basically got two Torkoals and we made our way to Nurse Joy. Healed up, right? And we basically, our team was the Manhattan, Pex, Bug, Durant, and two Torkoals for the 8th gym. It's kind of mid, but it's okay. So we have Roxanne, which, okay, this is my one of my worst fights. I'll be honest here. Basically, Luntun comes in, right? We heap, we bunk here, we try to think, okay, what do we do? So I go to Torkoal number one, and my plan is to just sack this so I can bring in something else. So we power jam, get some chip with heat wave, right? That's all good. We go into the rent, we kill this. Now, do you come in? I try to iron head, but we do have assault, so, so heat crash kills us. We try to spike up, bunk here a bit, you know, solemn like usual, but in the end, Sunajer gets rid of big boy stall, man. What a goddamn man. Bugbuzz does kill Sonager, but so the Wudo is in. I can't send out anything, so I bug buzz on this to get chip off. He hits head smash, gets rid of that. We go into Dome for the finish. Then he goes into Shock Hold. I say Earthquake. He final gambits, which scared me. But then a castle comes in. We EQ that as well. Gigalith is the last Pokemon. But we basically just stalled it and flame forward and went into Dome to finish it off. As we did beat Roxanne. Basically, we have one Pokemon left to go and catch our five others, which, hey man, good luck. So, yeah, this was gonna be very difficult, as obviously we only have one Pokemon and we can't risk it dying. So, we only had Gothitelle and Subat in this route, which after about a long time, I mean a long time, basically we said all my Pokeballs, I think about 30 minutes, we did manage to get two Subats and one Gothitelle. But the main Pokemon here was the Subats, because we basically gave them simple. If you don't know how simple works, imagine if I use Calm mind instead of getting plus two i get plus three so my plan is was to use it to swivets and sweep with them just so i don't have to use them and risk him dying so our first elite full fight was Drake. Now that's not too bad, right? Because there's no, it's not a dark type, it's fine. It's off with Noivern, I lead off with so bad to come mind and try to sweep. It does taunt me, but I do psychic. Actually taunt again, by psychic again, we get red. Here comes Joldon, we hit with that, gone. But this thing comes in. And this thing was an insane threat to my team, because basically, I couldn't do anything to it, instead of going into Darmanitan, and I couldn't risk that dying. So I had to sec one of the Gotha tiles, click Superpower, get rid of my Dragon, then goes into Flygon, which obviously I know he will do a ground type move, so I go into my flying type Zubat, combine twice, go to plus four, click Psychic, get rid of Flygon, Turret comes in, get rid of that as well. Then we air slash Appleton and get rid of Drake and the first Elite for member is done. As we continued our adventure to the second Elite for member, we basically decided to go to this route if you saw before there was a small PC. That PC basically gives you a Pokemon you got from before but with a curse. So I was gonna catch this Punkaboo but then I realized wait I have no Pokeballs and we fight this trainer and I had to go to Subat and, and my Subat died. So we only have three Pokemon and again no Pokeballs to catch anything. So thankfully we got through that route, it was time to go to the PC, but there is a catch. As I said from before, you basically get a curse. We did pick Toxpex out of the three Pokemon we got here. We wanted some more coverage, plus more ways to stall, obviously. So what happens is, when I get this, you will see I get something. 
which is called a flinch kills. Now this flinch kills basically makes it so every move opponent has gives him a 10% flinch chance. So even if he ice beams, it can still flinch me. That's basically how bad this thing is. Although we aren't in the best condition, it was time for the second elite for member Glacia. She leads off with Delibird, lead off with perks to basically go in T-Spike. First of all, we see what it's gonna do. It does try to debond on me, which is fine because I'm not gonna cut in one hit. But this thing does have rapid spin, which is a bit annoying, but we do bunker it and just basically stall it until a point where we get one spike up when it does rapid spin, so we're in a pretty decent spot. But Mr. Rhyme is psychic and it also can have freeze dry, so we kinda have to go out. Go straight into Gothetile to basically go ahead and click Dark Pulse and get as much damage as we can, but thankfully we kill it, but it also rapid spin away my spikes again. This thing, this process was a goddamn problem, man. I had to try to stall this so much because Poltergeist did pretty much half. So I T-spiked on this again, just so I can get, you know, some poison later on when it comes in. So I go into Gothitaal when it clicks freeze dry, obviously. I try to get some damage off, it outsuits me, which, is, which makes sense. Then I go into Dom to finish it off with a good old superpower and goes into Frostlass again. Dude, this thing was such, such a massive threat to me, it's insane. It does so much damage. And this thing, I think, was probably choice banded when I look back at it right now. But thankfully, in the end, through the means of potions, we managed to go ahead and stall Frostlass. Enough for it to die. Glacian does come in, which I want to go into Dom, but of course he has HP crowd, which does 10 quadrillion percent. So I go straight into Pex again, and through the means of recover and stalling, it is another Pokemon that gets stalled. <laughs> it goes into Ninetales, he gets Veil up, but at that point it doesn't really matter because I literally have like two Pokemon and I can just stall this with recover and other things. Yeah, so that's the second lead for member done. Not in the best of ways, but hey man, we have to do everything we can to win this challenge. So the worst thing that could have happened basically happened where we got a route where there was no Pokemon, so I had to <laughs> use my Rakanis to level up my Pokemon to the cap, because it was literally nothing. But, thankfully, this time we actually went ahead and bought the Pokeballs. So if we do manage to beat Fiob, then we can actually go ahead and catch some Pokemon. <laughs> Finally, here comes Fiob, the ghost type elite for member. She leads off with Frostlass, which gave me PTSD, but thankfully this one wasn't as annoying. It was more of like a spike lead than a choice banded Pulger I set, so we got rid of that. Then this thing comes in, and everything on my team is weak to this. And I struggled though, because I forgot I was taunted, and I forgot I didn't have enough PP on Skull. So that's my bad right there, I'm gonna be honest. So basically I went into Subat on the Earthquake, tried to get some damage off with Psychic. I hoped it would kill, but unfortunately it did not, and Shadow punched and destroyed my Subat. So Dom came in, and I EQ with Dom, get rid of Golok, now this thing comes in. Coastal was a bit of a problem because I was really scared of it setting up. Thankfully, with the power of stall, we managed to get our T spikes up, recover, and in the end, stall it. Chandelier comes in. It had nothing for me to do more than half, so we just called it a few times, got our damage back, recovered, and got rid of Chandelier which only left two more Pokemon. This thing was a problem, because it could have been poisoned, but actually, we managed to burn it turn one and get rid of the balloon, and at this point, it couldn't do much to us, so if we just stalled it enough time, we could have gotten rid of it. And that was the end of Yob, and we beat Fiob with pretty much two Pokemon, and we can go ahead and continue to the last Elite Four member. So, as we enter the Camp Spooky Run, it was time to catch some Pokemon. So, we cut this to Blade right here, this Drampa, a Shiny to Blade actually, which is pretty goddamn awesome, and a Seeking. So, we were pretty much ready for the final Elite Four member. So, we currently had Dominatan, Pex to the Blades, Drampa, and a Seeking. We fought some pretty tough trainers along the way, but it was time to go ahead and go straight to the last Elite Four member which was Sydney. Now, Sydney wasn't too big of a problem in my head. Did have Crimson which was fine. Just this back up, get our spikes up, and everything will be okay. Basically, we just went ahead and stalled this guy as much as we possibly can. So thankfully, he does faint in the end. There comes Melma. We basically stalled it for a bit until we could go into the blade. Went back into Pex. He did knock off me there. This thing was a problem, though, because he had Lumberry. He also de-danced. So first of all, we went into the blade. We secret sold it. Then we went into Seek, which he killed me right away pursuit. We then secret sold after foul plays me. Then I basically here try to heal my the blade in hopes I can like survive this but the dark pulse just destroyed my ass. So I went straight into Drampa, hyper voiced. Thankfully dark pulse did not flinch me even though with the flinch kills he sent out Mandibuzz. As we both healed, Hyper Beam killed him, I could just shock and pulse and destroy the Sableye, and that means there's only two fights left. So, after we lost some casualties, it was time to get some new Pokemon, which we got Cramorant, also we got ourselves a Dopeas Mantine. And because in this fight, the Blade actually died to a Bishop, we had to get one more Pokemon, which in the end was another Cramorant. But here it comes, and here it is, the Wallace 
fight. Can we do it? Hopefully. It leads off with Quillfish. It wasn't too big of a problem because I just T-spiked. But as always, they always have taunt. But thankfully with Drain Up, I scalded and got the rid of that. Jellicent comes in. But I was basically kind of stuck because I couldn't scald him because he has water absorbed. So I switched into Manta and went back into stall. It was just planned to get up another T-spike up. So we did that and went back into Manta and destroyed the Jellicent. This thing came in. This thing was an insane threat. With CC, he did 200%. 20% like that's insane to a manta as well so I tried to push it up a bit and kind of stall it but there was no point so I, so I healed up my Doxipex and went into Cremeron to hopefully go ahead and finish it but I had no idea that CC kills Cremeron in one hit so that was interesting I bunkered here he CC'd anyway but the thing is he did struggle in the end because he was choice banded so that was good should have been an easy kill on intelon but snipe shot crit did like 20 quadrillion percent so it wasn't as fun as you might have expected to be we healed up a bit and then we decided to go into cramerond which looked fine until he well crit me again and got rid of cramerond so we went right ahead into stall stalled whatever there was left of intelon and got rid of it and put up another t-spike on the field which then led ludicolo coming into the field we stole that and there comes the big boy wayload and that means after he subbed he pretty much sealed his own fate and that was the end of the Wallace fight which only leaves us with one more fight coming in with three pokemon we had to catch three more so we got lantern shenanic and with the last pokeball one more lantern so it was time for one final heal and one final battle here he is thank you thank you thank you right, that's that's fine we go bunker turn one what do you do? What do you do? You... Arc slide. Alright. That's fine. Get these spikes up. That's fine. Scald you. Good. Huge. Alright. Huge T-spikes. Good. Nice. I cover. Good. Nice. Got it. Nice. Good. Alright. What's next? Stunfisk. Um... Okay. We might have power here. So have to be careful. I'm going to lantern number. I'm going to lantern number two, just to get some damage off. That's fine. I don't care about that too much. Lantern number one, scald again and get rid of it. Touch Rio. It's a lot of ground types, which is not good. The Shinotic. and Spore. Alright. That's why we do have you. Your choice scarfed for a reason. Clear X. You're scary. Like really scary, but you are poisoned. Good barrage, nice. Meet the pulse, decus. That's annoying, but it's fine, I think. To sack. Oh, oh these nuts. Fuck you. I'm gonna go into you. I'm gonna bunker. You're dead. Good. Other oh, Kuno. It's not a good Pokemon actually to face. Just a full switch into Dalm. And Blitz. Mawile. Let's go! Oh my god, let's go! Fuck you, Steven! Ah, let's go! <laughs> and that was the end of the challenge. If you guys reached until this point, thank you. Like and sub would be appreciated. Also, go follow me on Twitch if you want to see yourself in chat and help me out live. Yeah, but yeah, that's about it, guys. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.